Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's uh, Naturally Supernatural discussion on Naturally Supernatural Faith. And I'm excited. I love to talk about faith. And we want to talk about the idea that not only can we have faith in God, but God could give us the very faith of God, his faith in us to do the impossible. And we know that all of us are, are called as naturally supernatural Christians, as we say, out of the boat, uh, to face things that seem impossible, uh, invisible things, goals that are way beyond our human ability to reach. I was talking to someone recently taking care of, of foster kids and just some of their little hearts. Uh, for them to become normal is beyond just parenting ability. Um, someone to start ministry that would cost hundreds of thousands. They don't know how they can do it. Uh, we prayed for the sick this week. Many of the conditions, blindness and other things. But we know that God calls us to charge the impossible and that it's faith that makes the impossible possible through which God intervenes in those situations. As we know, um, Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to him who believes. And so we want to just look at a story today on, on naturally supernatural faith from Acts chapter 3, the healing of the lame man, beginning with verse 1. Now Peter and John went up to the temple around the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them who entered the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked alms. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew it was he who had begged alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together on Solomon's porch, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Why do you look so earnestly at us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man well? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted and killed the Prince of Life, whom God both raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which is from him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And that verse 16 is our memory verse. It is the faith that comes from God that performed this miracle. I want us to look at the context of faith, the content of naturally supernatural faith, and then the conquest or the uh, execution of that faith. The, con uh, the context is very important. Uh, Peter and John were, were, were in an outreach mode. They were, they were on the streets. One of the things that's so clear about miracles, we, we have a saying around here, the meat is in the street. That it, miracles and signs wonders are especially for unbelievers that bring them to faith. Jesus would say, as you go into all the world, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And it's almost as though when we are willing to bring our faith outside into the marketplace, to the workplace, to the mission field, that suddenly there is a context in which God is about to do uh, more amazing things than we've ever seen before. Jesus said, as I'm lifted up, I will draw people to myself. So here we see Peter and John lifting the Lord up in a public place. There's secondly the context of, of a great confidence Peter has. I like how he says, such as I have, I give you. He has an expectation 
that miracles could happen any moment. He has what I call now faith. You know, Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith is the substance of things that we hope for, the evidence of what we don't yet see. Whereas hope is, is future, faith is now. Faith is, I expect you to move today. It's, it's looking at circumstances as the staging ground for God to move. And what we see is that this hope and expectation set Peter and John up to be the instruments of a miracle. One of the things I found about people who, who receive the gift of faith is that they live lives of Holy Spirit optimism based on a stubborn trust and commitment to put the word of God, the promises of God on a higher plane in their minds than the problems or situations. One of my, my heroes of faith, Wayne Myers, the missionary who's spoken here before, says, faith when it operates is deaf to unbelief, sees nothing but success, is blind to defeat, it is unwilling to accept failure as final. It is unable to accept the possibility of evil triumphing. Faith only sees God and sees the impossible. And, and I just love that because we prepare our hearts for supernatural faith by the attitudes we choose every day, by the hopefulness. See, we can't always create faith in our heart, but we can choose to be hopeful. And faith is the substance of, of things that are hoped for. It comes from a heart that's declaring who God is, that's speaking promises from God, that's really expecting God to move in our life. I love the verse in Romans 4, 18. It talks about uh, Abraham, how he became this word of faith. Man, who saw miracles. In Romans 4, 18, it says, who against hope believed in hope to become the father of many nations. He did not let himself become weak in faith, considering his own body now as good as dead, since he was 100 years old and Sarah's womb being dead. He refused to stagger or deny or forget the promises of God through unbelief, but he kept growing strong in his faith, giving glory, being fully persuaded what he has promised he's able to perform. So you just see Abraham, you know, refuse to be discouraged. I mean, 27 years, they try to get pregnant, no baby. <laughs> and yet he says, no, I am the father of many nations. God's promises are true. That inner decision to stubbornly refuse to lower your expectations to the level of your experience or to lower your, your ask and your request of God to a level that would avoid disappointment but to constantly push the envelope and say, I am believing today, this is the day um, that God's going to move, creates the platform of faith. The content of faith, there's two things that he says are very important. Number one, he says, don't look at us as though our holiness has brought about this healing. People of faith ground their faith not in their works or worthiness, but in the grace of God. People of faith say, look, God's going to do miracles not because of me, but because of what he's already done through Jesus for me. Jesus shed his blood. Jesus has promised good things. He's the guarantor of this new covenant. He's the, the reason that God answers my prayer. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Because I come in Jesus' name, God's not answering my prayer. He's answering Jesus' prayer. It's based on what Christ has done for us, not of what we can do. Satan will often try to make it all about you. Who are you to expect a miracle? You know, you said some bad words this week, or you have a negative whatever. But you say, no, it's not by my holiness. It's by the promise of God based on what Jesus Christ did. The second thing about that uh, content of faith is he said, this miracle happened through the name of Jesus that what you, why you see this man well is, is it is his name and faith in his name that has made this man well. This idea of the name of Jesus is so powerful because it reveals to us what Peter and John were doing in that temple. 
that Jesus said, in my name, and he meant with my authority, with my power of attorney. You are to push back darkness. You are to go to the highways and byways. And when you go, you are authorized to subpoena darkness, as it were, and say, in my name, there's a new sheriff in town. In my name, sickness is not Lord here anymore. In my name, darkness must yield. It was their confidence that the name of Jesus gave them authorization. It gave them the security code to the safe of heaven. It gave them the key. What God wants to give each of us is a greater revelation of the power of the name of Jesus to oppose works of darkness boldly and confidently for his glory. The conquest of faith or, or the execution of faith is what we see here, a spoken word followed by a decisive action. Peter says to the lame man, rise and walk. Now what we see there is his faith has moved from a request to God to a command from God. I mentioned this in a, a couple of weeks ago, that the words Jesus give, gives us are not just words about the storm, but they are words to the storm. Jesus gives us this incredible thing called the word of faith. Now, why is this so important? Well, for example, in Mark chapter 11, verses 21 through 23, after they saw Jesus curse a fig tree and it withered and died, they asked Jesus how he had done this. And Jesus said, have faith in God, literally in the Greek, have the faith of God. For verily I say to you that whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe the things which he says will come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Notice that Jesus said faith is activated by a word. Even in salvation, Romans 10, 10 says, we believe in our heart unto salvation, but with our mouth confession is made unto righteousness. We confess Jesus as Lord, and in that confession, it's like we sign the contract. It's like we something moves that's miraculous in our heart Jesus is installed in, as Lord of our heart. Why? Because of our de declaration. Now, how do we do this? See, most people in their prayers, they stop at asking God to do things. But Jesus, when he prayed, he listened to the Father. And then he let God crystallize what he understood the Father's will was into a specific word, a declaration. Be healed. Lazarus, come forth. He, he spoke that, and that released the power of God. And this is something that you and I can do, that we can ask the Lord, Lord, I'm praying for my family. Crystallize in me. What would be your will? And then we declare it to take place. When I pray for things like on the border this year, I said, Lord, I'm praying that we could, by compassion and prayer, touch the lives of people in Las Cruces and what is, we want to do these programs in the schools and, and uh, feeding programs. And I said, Lord, what would you want us to accomplish? And I felt he told me that we would touch and feed the lives of, of 20,000 people on the border this year. Suddenly, I didn't just pray about it. I said, I declare in Jesus' name, 20,000 lives will be touched through Heart for the World missionaries on the border in this year. There's something about that. It works that way. See, faith never operates until we're committed. We don't see the experience or victory of faith until we make the commitment of faith. We don't know that we can walk on the water until we get out of the boat. It's, it's like we have to sign the, con the contract, and then we can execute God's will. Faith commits us. Faith says, I declare in Jesus' name, that my unsaved daughter, though she's gone now, she will return to the Lord and she will have a prodigal son experience. I'm declaring it. And I wonder for some of you, what would the Lord want you 
to have a word of faith about today. That he would want to just speak to your heart. You've been praying about this, but now it's time to speak it, and maybe it's time to act. He lifted the man up, and as the man attempted to come up, that's when the miracle happened. His legs were, were strengthened. What word would the Lord have you declare over your neighborhood, over your marriage? It's time for us to move and expect not just our faith, but the supernatural faith of God to be released through our life. In Jesus' name, amen.